Good morning, pregame crew. It is Friday, January 20th, 2023. It is 8.21 a.m. Eastern, 6.21 a.m. Mountain Time. You are at the pregame show. Thank you for being here. I officially get started in eight minutes, but I will do a few chart requests between now and then, do an audiovisual check, and say hello to my friends. Good morning, Greg, Mighty Pawns, Adri, Casey, Nugget. Thanks, Nugget. Hey, Wave. Hey, Bob, Sal, not Jacob, Carlos, Ed, Beehawk. Hey, Joe, Ludovic, Tess, Mal, George, Bonjour, Roger. Hi, Killian, Keith. Win for you. Hello, hello. Good morning. Thanks, Night Truck. Hey, Michael, Brave. Thanks, Wave. Hey, Mary, Sam. All right, y'all tell me real quick. Drop it in the chat. Drop it like it's hot. What was your best trade of the week? Hi, Jade, Andre, Ken. I'm going to go back up to the top and see if there are any chart requests. I'm assuming, Tess, you mean thank God it's Friday and not TGIF, a ticker. I'm just kidding. All right. VBK, VPK on Euro next. VPK. Oh, there it is. All right. We're at the daily 50 MA. This is not what you want to see as far as beautiful extension, bull flag, bull break, and then a pullback. <clears throat> when you get a bull break out of a bull flag, you want to see an extension to the upside, not a fizzle. And that fizzle starts getting that rounded top look. Do you see it? Now you're set up. You could probably tighten it up to the two day. Now you're set up for a potential head and shoulders. You see the left shoulder head. This is early pattern rack. It's just something to be aware of. If you're not being a picky bull like I am right now, then you're saying, okay, we're holding the daily 50 MA. We're above 2692. Let's keep it going. Four hour downtrend. Did not get oversold. Hourly bulls are testing. 2808, 2810. Need to get over 2810 to change that hourly trend. QQQ short was the best. All right. MNQ for you, Bob. I didn't know you traded uh, futures, Bob. Tesla, Mara, man. Netflix and Google. I planned on going over Google. Netflix is a tough one. They had a they had a small revenue beat. I would say it was in line. They had a big earnings miss and they crushed the subscription count. So we're having a bullish reaction. I didn't know how that would be digested overnight. So I stayed away. If I had to bet just based on financials, I would have thought that we would have given up a lot of these gains based on that huge earnings miss. But I guess that they're so pumped about the subscription numbers that they can disregard the EPS because I just heard this morning, uh, their profit margin is 2%. That's deplorable. Most businesses, I mean, that's really top. And if you're selling a good, I get it. I guess you're selling a good, you're making content, Netflix is. But man, 2% is rough. And their CEO co-founder is stepping down. So 339.36 is your resistance. From a FIB perspective, you want to hold 333 to keep a potential four-hour bull flag alive. And Google is bullish. They are cutting 12,000 of their workforce, and you're like, uh, doesn't that sound terrible? Well, yeah, it sounds terrible, but at least they're doing something positive to decrease expenses. They're trapping in the daily 50 MA, trying to get over that right now in pre-market. Uh, that's a bullish development. And I would say you want to stay above $95 to keep a bull flag alive here. Bullish. I like Google for a tightening range buy or a pullback buy. Okay. NVDA. I go over that every day and I'll go over Tesla. All right. Oh, good, Bob. I like, I'm glad you liked it.
Okay. M-A-R-A. -A. So n knowing what I know about Bitcoin is that Bitcoin held up pretty well overnight and was bouncing this morning decently. It had gone green. We're back to slight red at the moment. But M-A-R-A, -A, in my opinion, needs Bitcoin to go and the market to go. Both go green and stay green uh, in order for it to get some continuation. And just so we keep our perspective, I've shown you this a few times, but I want you to look right here. MARA is up 105% for the month of January. And now mind you, we've been closed two trading days in January, two regular trading days we were closed for holidays. And we're not even two thirds through the month and this is up 105%. So I just like to remind myself of that if I'm looking for an MARA long. I'm not saying you can't go long. It's just something you want to keep in mind that this thing is extended. And extended is a subjective word that really doesn't mean a whole crap ton in trading because things can get extended and go a lot longer than you can stay solvent. So just remember that. 765 is an intraday level from Wednesday you want to be aware of. And then your next resistance is $8.865. Support is $731. I will always, always tell you the truth. When people say to tell you the truth or if I'm being honest, well, I hope we're always being honest and we're always telling the truth. I will never pretend to know a direction or fake it if I don't see a clear direction. And I, I can tell you this is one tough chart. Location where price is for me to say, oh, this is a perfect top fish or, oh, this is a perfect bottom fish. This is diddling in the middle as far as I'm concerned. You're at the hourly 50 MA. I guess I would say 765 short, that intraday level here, 765 sh short, you're at the hourly 50 MA. And above that, then you're really looking long, but I couldn't go long where we are. I couldn't. A pullback long, sure, around 713. Oh, awesome, Casey. Yeah, IIPR took a beating yesterday. Good morning, dropping dimes in ER. An absolute beating. So we held that 91.05 from here. I would say as long as we hold $91, it could be a decent long. You're really stepping in front of a bear train here, high probability of getting stopped out. And remember, you could get stopped out by 50 cents and it still be a double bottom because of the spreads on IIPR. Volume was pretty good yesterday for a change. Liquidity was probably a little bit better, but I don't hate the idea above $91. Yep, no diddling in the middle. Y'all ready to get started? Let's do this. Good morning. This is who I am. I'm Chark Al Lori, and I'm part of the Chark Guys community, and we teach technical analysis. If you want to give me a follow on Twitter, that would be lovely. Uh, at Chark Al Lori. And if you missed the webinar, I had the webinar that Dan did yesterday, and as always, he was dropping dimes um, here. He was dropping nuggets, whatever you want to say. Uh, we're having a 40% off our individual courses and bundles with code STUDY40. STUDY40. Actually, I'm going to type that here because it gets lost in the pen. So you use code STUDY40 if you're interested in purchasing a course. And Dan just updated the entry and exits course. So it is very up to date with his most recent trading experience. It, the last time he did it was five years ago. So he did it again this year to update things that he's learned over the last five years. This code is good for a week. So if you're interested in technical analysis, we actually do have a free course on our website, chartguys.com, and you could start there and get your beak wet, then after that, do a course. But if you want to get that course on sale, now's the time to do it. All right. So what I do here every morning, besides cut up a, just a little bit, is I go over indices, commodities, crypto movers, and shakers of the day. I have notes off screen 
that I use to guide me to make sure I stay on track. And I share those with TCG members when I'm done in case they want to slice and dice them. If you're interested in my chart setup, you can click on the link below in the video description to receive a PDF explanation. And for those of you over on TradingView, hello and thank you for being here. We've had record attendance this week, so y'all all get gold star, gold star, gold star. I also do this table and this table is just a way for me to communicate with you. And yes, it probably looks incomplete if you look at rows like this that I did not complete. I did not complete them for a reason because I feel like it's a push and it's tainting the witness. It doesn't really provide an edge. So there's definitely some subjectivity in how I complete this table. And these weightings are arbitrary based on my trading experience. So overall, slight bullish lean via the table. Uh, overnight, but we're struggling at 39.30. We're clearly struggling at 39.30 on ES, and we got to get over that. And I would even make a bold statement. We need to get over it before open in order for me to look bullish today. 39.30 is the line in the sand. And that's me rounding off, and that's okay. Simplifying trading is actually a better way to make money. I think I've shared with y'all before that I did a mentoring session with someone that wasn't in TCG uh, five years ago, and her name was Crimson Heart. She was unbelievable. Trader. And her charts, let me see if I can show you. This is what her charts look like. I'm not even kidding. And I love to stop and do this every once in a while, just so you understand the importance of price action and everything else can be noise. And her charts look like this. Nope, not that. And she would only chart levels that had some major price history and she would say, okay, I'm gonna go short in this area if price is approaching it from the bottom. And I'm going to stay in that short as long as this level holds, period, period. And then here, price approaches this support from above, I will go long. And literally, this is what her chart looked like. She did not have those, um, what do you call those? Uh, no, not those. These, these, uh, the bars. She didn't have bars. She didn't have candles, columns, hike and ashy, nothing, just a line. And she was one of the best traders I have ever met. And I promise you, there is a point in your trading where you're overcomplicating it. And of course, I've been guilty of that. And over the last six and a half years, I have just slowly whittled away what I use on my charts. And you could boil down your chart to this and leave it on the hourly and you could make a living trading using just this chart. And I, I, we sell indicators. Well, we're about to sell indicators in the next couple months. We're designing our page for trade keeper, which is one of my indicators that I toggle on once I'm in a trade to help keep me in the trade as long as it's a winning one. So yes, I think indicators are wonderful, but they can also really cloud your judgment as to what's important. All right. So 39.30 is the level. We need to get over 39.33 to change this hourly trend. Let's go look at NASDAQ. Actually, Big Spark, she was a prolific, amazing day trader. And she would go in long at support. She would go in short at resistance. And she would hold it. And she would scale out one scale into profit and keep that last scale. She's the one that taught me post so play out or stop out. And she would hold it and she would even she would hold it overnight if it was still winning trade and she would hold it overnight. She would never hold things past Friday, but just really interesting. And I'm not saying that her way is the right way. I'm just putting a huge emphasis on simplicity and price action. And if that's not the core of what you do, then you may need to reevaluate if you're not consistently profitable. All right, so NASDAQ made an hourly trend change. That looked promising, but look what's holding it up. The hourly 50 MA, the Great Wall of Louisiana, the yellow line. We've got to get through the hourly 50 MA or it's just another rejection. So yay, NASDAQ, you changed the hourly trend. Means nothing if ES can't get on board, RTY can't get on board, and YM is really lagging. 
Dow is lagging big time. So if you want to look for names to short today on market weakness, you really want to lean into those Dow names. NASDAQ, I would be would be my long choice, which is why you'll see Google on my long list. So if you're interested in my levels, as always, these horizontal rays that I plot, they're over here in light gray on this key or this X, what is this? X, Y, X, I don't know, Z axis, legend. It's over here on this, in this light gray. So even if I don't call out the numbers, which is kind of boring for someone to just shout numbers out at you when you can see them with your own eyes. So just know that RTY, here's your resistance and your support. Really getting uh, hung up here at the daily, at the hourly. 21 EMA, YM, 8 EMA slapping down price, super weak. Hey Marshall, good, good. Yep. Good morning from Guatemala. Hey Bennett, oh my gosh, we miss you. <laughs> ER. You really don't like real estate, do you? Which it's really terrible right now with mortgage rates. So VIX right now, we're struggling here. That 2171, we talked about this yesterday morning. We did. And we have a potential four-hour bear flag forming. That is bullish for the market. Let's see if the market bulls can take advantage of this. So far, no good. Let's go look at the dollar. Dollar's picking up strength a little bit. We talked about this potential diamond bullish reversal pattern. The dollar didn't make good on that yet. It's attempting uh, to make another push. It needs to get over 102.48. 102.48. It's a little bit stronger than the indices this morning. And then we have bonds. Bonds are weak. So yesterday, bonds had this four-hour bull flag. This is what our picture looked like yesterday morning. And I'm like, bonds is telling us that somebody's lying. Because the bonds are strong and the market wasn't. Well, now the bonds have gotten in line with indices, and that is a bearish overtone. Let's see, did I check that for bonds? Yes, I said that's for market bears here. And dollar is actually picking up strength, so I'm going to uncheck that here. So you can see we definitely have a push on our table. All right, yes bonds. Hang Seng was up big yesterday and you'll see that I used that data in my Queen of the Mountain trades for Baba and Neo up 1.82% and DAX is green. So got a little bit of divergence there internationally. They're holding up better than the markets here and Bitcoin. Bitcoin is making a stand. Look at that daily chart. They're like, yeah, we dare you bears. I mean, bears are having their way with it to a degree, but overall, bulls are maintaining control of this chart. As long as they're above these hourly EMAs, bulls are in charge, and that's your resistance. 21222, support 20865. All right, Ethereum, same thing, holding up very nicely. No big issues whatsoever. Crypto charts tell us that the market bears are lying and that market bulls have a chance. And again, what's the level? Let's get a tattoo today. What's the level we need to see ES over at the time of open? 3930. 3930 has been the battle line. We need to get over it preferably before open. And just to let y'all know, we have housing numbers. Let me go pull it. Existing home sales at 10 a.m. So forecast is 3.96 million. This is three stars, meaning high volatility expected. We've been in a low liquidity environment, high algo reaction environment. So even minor data that has been minor in the past is major and could still move these markets. So just be aware of that. So these first 30 minutes of market open, you're like, yeah, I got a total, be total beat on what's going on in the market. I know I, I got this. Just know that the market could slap you around 30 minutes after open and totally change direction. It's one of those sneaky, sneaky um, data points. I think I've told y'all this joke, but you know how do you, you surprise a unique rabbit? Do you know how you surprise a unique rabbit? Unique up on it. <laughs> I'm saying, Jorge, I'm saying 39.30 is a major line of defense or line of battle for ES. I want you to look 3933, 3933, 3937. Over here, 3934, 3935, 3931, 3928. So that is where the most transactions have happened 
in our market as of late has been at 39.30. If I put a volume profile on here, the node would be around 39.30, a major node at least around 39.30. So it, above 39.33, we have an hourly trend change. And I'm saying that would send a message to the bears if we could change that hourly trend at 39.30. So I hope that helps. That's basically the street. So let's do battle. Y'all know I like to fight. Not really. <laughs> I, that is a mom joke if I've ever heard one. Okay, so if we have streets here 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 all right if this is where the most battle has gone down here then i'm labeling this street as compton crips bloods i.e bears bulls this is where they've been fighting. That's where they've been fighting the most. Over here, you have west side. Over here, you have east side. They're not battling over there. They're just saying, take it. You take it. You have that street. I don't care. I'm not going to fight you over it. But this main street, I'm going to fight you over it. So the battle has been going down at 3930. And to know where the key auction, and remember, we're in an auction, a constant auction. That's what what the stock market is. Hey, I'll pay $100 for Amazon. Okay, well, I'll sell it to you for $101. And then they meet in the middle of $100.50 and then they sell it and the auction occurs. This is where the auction is occurring the most at 39.30. So that's why it's the level. <laughs> Gregory, I'm so sorry. That's okay. I'll re-earn it. That's all right. I've lost it for lesser reasons. Okay, gold. Sorry, y'all, let me get my chart back. Okay, so potential four-hour bull flag on gold. Gold bulls continue to fight, and I mean fight. So gold bulls are still in charge of this chart. Look at that daily chart. If you owned, If this were a stock and you owned it long, wouldn't you be dreaming of a chart that looks like this? So caution, gold bears running in front of this. The gold bulls just keep buying pullbacks. As long as that's happening, I wouldn't stand in front of that train. I'm so glad that that worked. You know, not every analogy lands. So I'm glad that helps. All right. So silver, I'd be a much more comfortable silver bear here looking for this four-hour lower high to top out sooner than later compared to 2450. I want y'all to look at this chart. These are the type of setups that I search for. These are higher conviction. Let me, let me see how I can explain it. These are higher conviction setups than most. When you have an exaggerated, you have this EQ, low or high, and you pull back to a lower low and it's a huge move down, 5% move down, and then you retrace that. Let's see what the retrace is. About 70%. As we approach, not that. As we approach 2450, the closer we get, odds increase that bears will take over. Odds increase. So I've thought about an indicator, and I, I think I've mentioned this only one time before is if you have an exaggerated move, let's say that these swing up, swing downs are about one and a half to 2%. And then you have this huge 5% move down, then it triggers the indicator and says, hey, the more likely scenario is a lower high. And you see how these fibs, 38%, 50%, 60%, 70%, in my head, stay with me, please stay with me. In my head, these percentages correspond with my conviction level of the short. Does that make sense? So the closer we get to 2450, if we get to 80% and we retrace 80% of this move here to this move here, then I am 80% sure or have an 80% probability of it topping out here. If it gets to 90, 
there's a 90% chance it will top out in that area. So essentially using FIBS as a probability metric for your conviction level that the lower high will stick. And that's about as good as I can explain it right now on a Friday after a brain dump the last four mornings. But I hope that that, <laughs> I hope that helps. It's these exaggerated moves from a lower low up testing the high and you're like, crap. And typically volume drops off. Your volume drops off as you approach that 2450. And you know the move is fizzling. Now, could news come out here and the dollar drop and silver have a burst? Absolutely. But in general, these are the type setups I seek out. Oh, good, Ed. Good, 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 good. And I'm going to work on it. I'll get better at it. <laughs> Cement. <laughs> Jorge, you're a turd. <laughs> Jorge's a little troublemaker. And you know what? That's my personality too. It's probably why I giggle, Jorge. All right, oil. Oil has a potential six hour diamond bearish reversal pattern. This is not a diamond you're gonna bring home to mom. I know it ain't cute. We're not going for cute. Let's make it a little cuter. We're not going for cute. We're going for accuracy. So a diamond bearish reversal pattern occurs when you go from a higher low higher high, lower low. So that's also the beginning of a broadening formation. But when you just kind of fizzle right there in the middle, then it becomes a diamond bearish reversal pattern. Does that make sense? Because if you would have had an exaggerated move from lower low to higher high, then you have a broadening formation. But that's not what's happening. We're just kind of retracing about 50% of that move and fizzling. I like oil short today. We do have the Baker Hughes rig count at 1 p.m. Eastern. That can sometimes impact price, but not all the time. So I actually like oil for a six hour lower high compared to 82.66. Speaking of broadening formations, I want y'all to look at this. Look at oil. Higher high, higher low, higher high, lower low, higher high, boom, we've got a broadening formation. And I wish I would have noticed this yesterday. It did not occur to me that we had a broadening formation because of this higher low here and how shallow it was. It didn't jump out at me, but you can see these series of higher highs that are not getting a ton of follow through. So we have a broadening formation on the daily on oil and a potential six hour diamond bearish reversal pattern. Oil is green, so be careful with that idea. <laughs> A stoic, I'd, you know, has Bitcoin, I'll, I'll ask it back to you in a different way. Has Bitcoin decoupled from the S&P or is Bitcoin leading the S&P? Because sometimes the decoupling is because it's a laggard or a leader. In this case, for the, this week, I would say Bitcoin has been a leader. And it's told us time and time again that the market bears are lying. And if Bitcoin would be holding up and the market would be rolling over and then it, all of a sudden market bulls step it up and it's like, okay, Bitcoin signaled that bull move. If you could see who's talking to you, a triple viewership. Big Spark, if you could see me right now with my hair up in a messy bun and uh, my tired, sleepy face, I don't know. We may decrease the viewership. But you know what? I may try that big spark. I'll try it next week. Thank you for the suggestion. If you could hit that like button, I'd greatly appreciate it. So I'll try it next week. Big spark, my husband will be so happy for me to kick the homeless look to the curb so I could get on camera with y'all. So, hmm, we'll see. Tim, I short oil using... Um, QM or is that right? It is. Yeah. QM or MCL. I usually do a set a bunch of MCL micro oil futures contracts. Uh, you could use USO options or you can use ERY or ERX for the XLE short or long. Possibly Michael, possibly. <laughs> Possibly, Mike, he's saying is uh, Bitcoin following NASDAQ or NASDAQ following Bitcoin? Possibly. Let me go see if that's the case, Anonymous. Anonymous is asking, is Bitcoin in a 12-hour diamond pattern? You know what? It sure is. 
unconfirmed, totally unconfirmed. So you got higher, high, higher, excuse me, higher, high, lower, low. And what you typically see is an EQ on this side. So this is a uh, very early stage, but possibly it could be a diamond bearish reversal pattern. Oh, good, Casey. I don't know. Does, do they still have volume? Yeah, you could. There you go. UCO and SCO. That's what Wave suggest suggesting. All right. Nat gas is weak. Super weak. We're making enough room for an hourly high or low, but man, these bulls have just been so untrustworthy. So untrustworthy. I mean, we could call uh, Nat gas bulls the Sam Bankman Freed of commodities. They have been untrustworthy. So 3396 is your next resistance on the four hour. You've made enough room for an hourly high or low. I don't want to fool with Nat gas today, the day before a weekend, because we know Nat gas has a history of gapping up or down on Sundays and ripping faces off. And I'd like to salvage what's left of my face. <laughs> okay. You're welcome. Okay, Apple. Apple. When I was looking at it earlier, we were over 13625. We would need to get over 13625 during regular trading hours. 13625 during regular trading hours. If Apple can do that and ES is not over 3930, then Apple could possibly pull up ES up and over 3930. Amazon. So what I was looking at two hours ago is almost everything I was looking at was in an hourly EQ with a potential daily bull flag. So we're looking for those daily higher lows. Look at that. Plenty of room for a daily higher low. Where she stops, nobody knows. So we got that hourly oversold yesterday. So we don't want to go back down to that level or we're not done with daily consolidation. Hourly EQ for NVIDIA as well. Plenty of room for a daily high or low. Plenty of room. We got the hourly oversold yesterday. Now don't give that up. Take a little run and start and get up and over those hourly EMAs sooner than later. Tesla. Tesla, it has some relative strength this morning. There was some news about Tesla cutting into Lucid and Rivian's. Um, I don't make this stuff up, y'all. I know sometimes the way I rattle stuff off, you're like, what the heck? But I scour this news like a crazy person. Or maybe not crazy, maybe slightly crazy. Here. Uh, Lucid, Rubion, Tesla, price war and electric vehicle started by market leader. Tesla has made it much more difficult for money losing startups like Rivian and Lucid to grab share in this industry. So the, the news out saying that Tesla is really eking into Lucid and Rivian's um, margins or market share. Yeah, market share is probably the, the right word. So Tesla has some relative strength on that news this morning. We are looking for a daily higher low. We did get, we did not get hourly oversold. Oh, that's right, because we had this big move up and it ruined that hourly oversold uh, trade setup. We need to get over 130 pretty early on in trading in order for bulls to feel confident that the daily higher low is set. Baba. All right, if we go back, I brought this down earlier. I'm going to bring it again. We're having a, a small contest inside our community. 10% of our members are participating. And I was showing you that MARA is up 105% in January. Well, here's another name that's been holding steady strong, really steady strong. Baba. And I told y'all earlier that uh, Hang Sing is up 1.82%. Look at Baba up 28.39%. It's been hanging there. I've been looking at this for two weeks and it's like been 25, 26, 27, 28. Really relative strength. And look at Baba in pre-market. 
This is a potential hourly bull flag and a daily bull flag. Baba's got some serious get up and go. Could it give it all back at open? Absolutely. So be careful, but watch for your setups. Are you looking for a break of a high up low bar, i.e. a stair step pattern, an EQ pattern for a potential long? I like Baba and I like Neo, and I'm looking at these names based on a Hang Sing strength. All right. So if we look at Neo, Neo likes these round numbers. I know 1118 is not a round number, but you can make it 1120. But these are the levels you're looking at. I like NEO long above $11. I like NEO short below $11.18 or flip to long if it gets over $11.18. So basically, you're playing Frogger. If price is here at $11 and it gets over it, then you're going long. And then you're looking at $11.18. If price were to reverse then, you sell your long and you flip short. And you come here and if price pauses, you get out of your short, you enter long. If we lose $11, you enter short. You write it down here. Does that make sense? You're constantly playing Frogger at these key levels. And if you watch NEO, NEO is a wonderful name to trade at these key levels. At the quarters, 1125, 1025, 1075, 11. In 25 cent increments, you could play NEO like a Frogger game and you would probably win more. You would more than... Ugh. I don't know the math, so I feel like I should be careful speaking in absolutes, but you should come out way ahead doing that. Okay, let me move these tables up. It's making me crazy. We're running out of time. Okay, Google, I like for a long. They are laying off 12,000 employees, so I like this for a pullback buy early on. Remember, we have data coming out 30 minutes after the market opens at 10 a.m. Eastern. Don't get smacked in the face and get caught standing flat-footed when that data comes out. Don't you do it. Manage that risk. And Microsoft had one of those, like, classic hourly EQ going into today looking for a daily higher low. Microsoft and Apple could hold some early clues as to how it breaks out of this range. So I would go with the break. If the market's green and we break above 234.40, I would look long. Same thing if the market's red and we break below 231.44, I would be looking short. All right. Back and forth. Okay, um, let's do that one more time. So here, NEO extends into 11.25. All right, the quarters, let's just say the quarters. And then it pauses, we get a big upper wick, you flip short and you stay in short and you see it come down to $11, nothing happens. And then we start to approach 1050 and we pause and we get this double bottom, you go long, all right? Then you start approaching $11, you see a pause, you exit long and you go short. And then look where we stopped at the quarters at 1075. Eleven twenty-five. Eleven dollars. It's pretty cool. You really got to go study Neo, and it'll you'll get excited about this thought or approach. Do you see it? Look at the quarters. They would have provided you great ping pong. Let's circle it here. Here, 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 here. It would have given you one, two, three, four, five trades. All right. I appreciate y'all. Can y'all hit that like button before you hit the exit door? Hit that subscribe button, notify button. And don't forget about the exit, uh, the entry and exit course, which is my favorite course. If you're going to buy a course, that's my absolute favorite. That's going to get you the meat and potatoes of what you need for technical analysis and how to recognize price action and patterns and how to enter and exit properly. And this webinar is pinned in chat right here at the top. And the code is study40. And that sell will be occurring for one week, six more days. All right. Thank y'all for being here and use stop losses.